So after the announcement of the Tring Intimate Landscape Competition and showing you one of my favourite photos uh, involving dodging and burning, which in hindsight I probably didn't explain that well, what I thought I would do is show you how I put together one of my favourite photos. Um, this was one of the first photos I actually entered into a competition within the club and it got a 20 from the judge. I think if I remember rightly, I think the judge was Paul Mitchell, who, as we saw a couple of weeks ago, likes woodland photos anyway. So what we've got is this is the dark photo. This was taken on an Olympus E510, very old camera. Um, it's a 10 megapixel camera and it has a pitiful 9 um, EV dynamic range. You don't need to worry about what that means, but modern cameras are typically up around the 13 and a half, 14 EV dynamic range, which means they can capture more detail in the lights and the shadows. So they're roughly 50% bigger than the camera that I was using here. So this is the dark photo. This was taken at 1 60th of a second at f4.4. This was the light photo taken at 1 20th, and then this was the the middle one and so we're going to combine all of these photos into um, into one HDR photo so I've selected all the selected all the four photos in the film strip at the bottom and I'm going to right click on one of those and we'll choose photo merge HDR now I'm doing all of this in Lightroom everything I'm going to do in here except for one bit right at the end is in Lightroom um, so this has combined the four photos. Now a quick word on what's happening. So although I was on a tripod, I would tend to use auto align just to make sure the, the photos do align. This was taken on a very still morning, so there's no movement going on here. And then I'm going to use auto settings, which is kind of like using the auto option um, within the develop module, which we'll look at in a moment. And then we have some de-ghosting amounts. Now there's, there's no movement in here. So really it doesn't matter which one of these that I use. I could use any of them. Um, and it would work just fine. So we'll go with high. Because if we click on the show de-ghost overlay, if there was movement in here, it would show the areas that are moving. Now this is showing everything as being red, which should suggest everything is moving. But that's really because the, the sun is just is just moving through here. Not going to worry too much about that. And then we can actually stack these if we want, which I'm not going to do. So we'll just click on Merge. And this has added it to a task list. So it's just going to go through and merge the photos. This doesn't take long because being only a 10 megapixel camera, these, these images aren't. Uh, aren't huge. So there's the first step. Let me switch off the, the information up there. Now a couple of things that come to mind. First of all it's perhaps a little on the dark side and we've certainly got a greenish tint to the top half. So let's take this over into the develop module and what I might want to do is just push the um, exposure up a little bit and maybe we'll push the whites up and the blacks up um, just a bit more. I'm going to do something about some of these anyway. And the first thing I want to do is to actually get rid of that greenish tint that we've got to the top half. So in the in Lightroom we have a number of tools up here. So we've got a crop overlay or the crop tool so we can crop the image. And I may or may not do that, I don't know yet. Then we have the spot removal, which can also be used for cloning, and we will see that one shortly. Uh, red eye removal, well, we haven't got any eyes in here we need to worry about. And then we have um, three adjustment tools. So we've got a graduated filter, a radial filter, and an adjustment brush. And I'm going to use the graduated filter here. Now, the graduated filter is if you've ever used a graduated filter on your camera lens, this is the software equivalent. So what it allows me to do is to have two levels of processing um, within a photo. So what I'm going to do here is just drag this down. I'm going to hold down the shift key, which means I can put it in parallel to the top. 
and we can see here what it's done this is inherited my last settings which is to push the exposure up which is not what I want so if I just double click on the word effect that will get rid of that exposure and we, to get rid of the green tint what I'm going to do is just push this into the magenta a little bit let's keep going to get that green tint looking a little better and I might just add a little blue in there as well and maybe we'll just pull the exposure down in that top area so what's happening is that we're pulling the exposure down from where this red this circle is and if, if I put my mouse over the circle we get this red overlay and this shows where the effect is happening so we can see that we're actually removing that greenish tint from the top half of the photo and leaving the bottom half of the photo more or less un untouched. So that looks pretty good to me, so we'll do that. Next thing I want to do is I want to zoom in on here. So I'm just going to zoom into 100%. And we can just um, drag that around until we can see this part here. So this is where the sun was. And I want to just fix that sun flare in there on that trunk just to make it look like the trunk wasn't affected. To do this we're going to use the spot removal tool and I'm going to make sure, oh, let's just me switch off visualize spots, make sure we're, we're in clone mode and what I'm going to do is just paint over this area in there like so. And if I show my pins so we can see where Lightroom has chosen automatically to sample to fill that in that's not what I want it to do, I want it to use somewhere else. So let's just find somewhere which gives me a better match. So I'm just moving this, this second pin. So this is where we're, we're fixing and this is where I'm going to sample to fix that area. So that's fixed that hole in that, that trunk. So let's just come out of that. We've got a little bit of um, flare in there. I'm not too worried about that because by the time I finish that's not going to be that noticeable but if it was then I can always end up um, brushing something in there just to actually better smooth it out which we may do anyway okay so the next thing I want to do in here is to do a little bit of um, dodging and burning now I did dodging and burning the other night and I probably didn't explain it that well and what dodging and burning is is about doing is about sculpting and the way light falls on the subject within your photo and you would do dodging and burning on absolutely anything whether it's landscape or portraits or wildlife or still life anything like that you you can do dodging and burning so what i would really like to do is just to actually do something with some of these shadow areas so to do this i'm going to use the adjustment brush and we'll just double click on the word effect just to uh, neutralize everything. Now with the adjustment brush I could actually start brushing in here into some of these darker areas to actually change the way the light falls in here. I can either darken them or I can lighten them a little bit and I can actually change where I want you as the viewer to look. Uh, we don't only have to do exposure though, we can change the contrast, highlights, shadows, any of the things in here in actual fact. I'm not going to do sharpness. Sharpness is actually pretty good if we zoom in to 100% and we just move down. You know, the sharpness is looking pretty good in there. Remember, this is a 10 megapixel camera, so this is not, um, this is not something huge. So let's just push the exposure up just a little bit, maybe half a stop. And then a word about the brush itself. So down here in this area where it says brush we've got two brush modes so we can have two different settings if you like for this this particular brush we've got erase which allows us to undo any changes that we might do and then we've got size well that's fairly self uh, self-explanatory the feather now if we look at the brush uh, on the photo you can see we've got two concentric circles uh, with a a solid grey circle with a plus in the middle. Now the inner circle, the, the, the brighter circle, not the plus but the one next one out, 
shows the limit of where the effect will be fully applied. And then the outer circle will show the limit where um, after which the effect will not be applied. So that's the feather. This is the, the range where it just gets gradually softer. And we can adjust the size of this feather by moving the um, this slider. So we'll push it up to 100. That gives me the maximum size. And if I change the size of the brush, that feather gets bigger and bigger. So that's fine. And then we have flow. A word about flow. So what flow is doing, imagine this um, This is a, a um, refilling a bucket. And if we use a hose pipe with a large, um, large diameter, we can fill that bucket really quickly because we get a big flow. If we use a hose pipe with a small, um, ap small aperture, then we only apply that or fill that bucket gradually. Well, flow in here is going to do the same thing. I've got my flow set down to about 28%. So to get full effect, if I had my exposure uh, up at, well, let's, let's push it up to one stop. I'm going to undo this, but because this, this will be too much. So roughly one stop. If I paint just once on there, it just lightens it by one third of a stop. If I brush on it again, it goes to two thirds. And I brush it again, it goes to one full stop, and so on and so on in that area. Now that's that is far too much, and it's it's far too quick on um, applying that. If I push my flow up to hundred, we do this in another area. I need to paint over there once to get the full effect. I prefer not to do this all at once. So we'll just undo those. And I'm going to pull my flow down to around 30% or 25%, that's fine. Let's pull my exposure into around about a half. And then I can just paint in here um, and I can adjust the size of my brush. So I can just paint in here, which will just bring out, and maybe what I'll do on this one as well is just open up the shadows just a little bit just so we can see a little bit more detail in those shadow areas. So I'm just going to paint in here. We can change the size of the brush if we need to. Just so we can see a little bit more detail. Now remember this is an HDR photo. So what I've effectively done on this it, ooh, is... Um, so I just moved the, the pin, which is not what I meant to do. There we go. Uh, that's too much. So if I hold down the Alt key, so notice when I hold down the Alt key, the plus in the middle changes to a minus, so I can just undo the changes I did in there. And that's probably all I want to do for that particular brush. What I will do is I'm going to do a new one, and on this one I'm going to pull my exposure down a little bit, and um, I'm just going to brighten down some of these these sun rays. So I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller there because these um, get wider as they get down. We'll click once there and then I'm going to hold down the shift key. Well, I'm just going to make my brush a little bigger. Make make my shift key, uh, so make the brush a little bigger. Hold down the shift key and I'll click again. And all that's done is that it's just darkened that sun ray. But in the same um, way that it, the, the sun ray is getting bigger, I'm actually colouring it. Uh, so not colouring, I'm toning it down a little bit. We can also go in here and add a colour. So I can also add a colour tint to this. So maybe we'll go with something like that. And this will just warm that up a little bit. And we'll do the same thing. So we'll make this a little bit smaller. Make this a little bit smaller. And we'll just click in there. We'll go over here and make this bigger. And we'll just stamp again, hold down the shift key and stamp again. And that's just putting a little bit of warmth into those sun rays. So we'll just make this smaller again. Now, unfortunately, what you can't do is you can't keep clicking in quite the same place. So we click just off it a little bit, make my brush a little bit bigger. Just click on it again. 
and we have a switch down here which allows me to switch this on and off now you may not be able to see it that clearly um, on the video but it is just making a very subtle change okay let's do another brush and all we're doing there is we're just um, doing a little bit of dodging and burning just to increase these these rays coming out of the sun so again we'll just make that brush a little smaller we'll come down here we'll make it a little bit bigger and we'll hold down the shift key um, and we'll just add a little bit of coolness into those shadows let's just make that a bit smaller we'll do the same thing over here so we're just doing a little bit of enhancement on these sun rays so let's again let's have a look and see what that's doing we'll just switch this on and off that's looking okay um if i want to hide these pins if i just press the h key that just hides the pins and lets me get a better idea of what we're doing so what i think we'll do now is we're just going to do something so i'm just going to hold down the space bar while i move here i just want to do something about this bit here so we're going to just reset this. I'm going to push my um, exposure up a little bit. Make my brush a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to paint in here. Probably push that up even more. Just to try and smooth that out. Uh, not, dis not smooth it out, but disguise it a bit. Now I've gone too far with that. But that's okay. We can pull back on here just to actually hide that and what we could do is just go with my brush make it make it much much bigger and then I want to make sure that my um, my feather is over that this this dark bit in here and I'm just going to paint over this to make sure that the feather part is going in here she will we'll just click on here a bit more and then what we've got down here is we have this thing called range mask and I can switch this to luminance and now I can hide that effect that I've just done in the light areas so we can pull those light areas all the way back down and maybe we'll push the the darker areas as well just to hide the effect so we're not making those particularly dark areas that light and we can just further refine where we're going with this click on done and we'll click on fit that's looking a little better it's not looking quite so obvious then if we zoom in particularly in the sh shadow areas if we look on the trunks for example we can see we've got some noise in here like i say this is taken on a very very old camera uh, where um, noise wasn't fantastic now if i was going to print this i probably wouldn't even worry about the noise but if I'm going to show this inside a PDR, I'd like to do something about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click on this and I'm going to choose edit in Topaz Denoise. And we'll edit a copy with the Lightroom adjustments. So this is going to make a TIFF and it will fire it off into Topaz Denoise. Topaz Denoise works really well on these old photos with uh, cameras that weren't that good and I'm just going to leave it on auto auto I find tends to work quite well for me and if we move this around this bar you can see the left hand side shows the before and the right hand sh side shows after now I don't want to be too aggressive with my denoise uh, remove noise and enhance sharpness because it can look um, que really quite obvious so I'll click uh, um, apply to that and that will just apply those settings. So it just takes a short while. So what this is doing this is creating a new TIFF. And if I wanted to do something else I could always take this over into Photoshop but uh, I, I don't need to do that with this. And that is my my finished photo. Um, it shows a little bit of dodging and, and burning. I did something to enhance those sun rays. 
Uh, if I wanted to do a bit more to this, we can always go back in here, hit my brush, and I might actually add a little bit of yellow and perhaps a little bit of magenta in there. I'll just, re just push my exposure up a little bit as well, I think, maybe. And we might just paint in on some of these, these ferns just to add a little bit of something in there for that. And so that's just sculpt, further sculpting that light. You may not be able to see it on the finished video, but trust me, it is there. And what I may well do is I might give you these photos so you can actually have a play around with this yourself if you, if you choose. So that's it, really. Um, that's really all I, I did to these, these images to produce this final photo. This is one of my favourite all-time images taken nearly 13 years ago or well, over over 12 years ago anyway um, and I've always liked this image this was taken at half past nine during the day on the in December at Black Park but don't worry too much about where it was photographed it's the time of day and the weather so this was in December this is a winter photograph we had that lovely golden red Vacan with the sun coming through the trees and I try to use the trees to block most of the light so you could take this anywhere really in principle um, so the, the where isn't important but it's it's going out there with your camera I auto bracketed these I probably wouldn't auto bracket now with the modern camera I'd probably do it manually and only take two photos rather than the three but like I said Old camera, low dynamic range, uh, it's the best I could do. So there you go, that's how I did one of my photos, that's showing a little bit of HDR, uh, processing this entirely in Lightroom, apart from, <coughs> apart from um, a little bit of denoise, which we took into Topaz. But apart from that, no Photoshop involved. Um, this is not something I would necessarily worry about putting a key line on because there's nothing um, black out on the edge here really. Nothing to stop you seeing where the edge of the photo is. So there you go. One thing that I should have mentioned and I did promise I would do at the start is to do a little bit of split toning. Um, now in Lightroom, what was called, we used to have a panel in here called split toning, and they've now changed it to something called color grading. We've got a couple of views of color grading. So we've got the one here where we can look at the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. But we can also look at this individually, so we can look at toning the shadows and the midtones, and then color, um, toning everything globally. Um, I prefer to use it so I can see all three. I just find it easier to see what's going on. And then down here, underneath each of these colour circles, we have a controller that allows us to adjust the luminance. And then the balance between shadows and uh, midtones and highlights. So we can actually say, well, this I want you to take more of this as shadow or more of this as midtone or more of this as highlights. And then finally, we've got how it actually blends between the two. Blending is not something you're probably going to use very much of. So what we've got here is a color wheel and we can use this in this is in the shadows area to change the tone of all of the shadow colors. So, for example, if I wanted to cool those shadow areas down, I might add a little bit of cyan into those into those shadow areas. But we can actually change the, the tone that we use. So you notice that as I move my wheel around, it changes just the shadow parts of the image. And then if I move the little circle in from the center of the, the image, which is no color tone at all, out to the maximum, that adjusts saturation. If I hold down the shift key, we'll get a line there, which actually holds the color that we're going to use in the photograph but we can still slide it in and out alternatively if i hold down the control key 
um, on Windows or the command key on the Mac, we get a circle and that um, then just allows me to maintain the amount of the, the color that we're going to tone, uh, the saturation, um, but adjust the color that we want to use. So I'm probably going to go with something a little bit cooler, maybe there for the uh, the shadow area. And then the, the highlights, we can do the same thing. So I might want to just warm those highlights up a little bit. So let's just see what happens as I move my color around. So we might go and add quite a lot of um, warm oranges in there. And up at the top here on the color grading title bar, we have a switch that I can turn this effect on and off so we can see how that looks. Actually, I quite like that. I think adding those warmer tones, particularly around the, the sun up there, works quite well. And we can just call those shadow areas down just to make it look a little bit more, feel more like it was on that day, um, which in December would have been a, quite a cold and, and frosty morning. And that's what color toning is. Now, if we adjust the balance, we can say, right, I want you to regard more of the image as being highlights. Oh, sorry, more going towards the shadow areas. Or we can shift it and make it more towards the highlights. Um, so in here, I think I'd probably want to make it go slightly more towards the highlights, just to make the overall feel of the image just that little bit warmer. I'm not going to, going to do anything with mid-tones in this photo. Um, I'm happy with it as it is. Then we have something where we can change things globally, where we can just add a global tint to the image. Uh, this is not something I would ever do on here, if I'm honest. And to reset, we just double click on the word global. And that's very akin to actually just tinkering with the temperature and the tint sliders inside the basic panel. Now you notice I'm actually doing this on the uh, the TIFF file, but you could equally do this on the the DNG, um, so the DNG this one, before we send it over for sharpening. It it really doesn't matter that much. So again, I can equally go into color grading. Um, I can add a bit of coolness into those shadow areas. Maybe that, and then we'll add a bit of warmth into those highlight areas. Don't really want any red in there let's just make it push it back up to there and then i could send it over into topaz uh, denoise just to remove the noise either way it will work just fine it's entirely a matter of preference really so there you go that's using color toning um color grading and the whole point behind it is to actually give it a look and feel that you might find in say um, a cinema the current sort of vogue is to use uh, teal, which is kind of a cyan greenish colour on the shadows and then use orange in the highlights. That happens quite a lot. Uh, in uh, Currently, it seems to be the, the flavour of the month. But it's entirely up to you. You can say so you don't get any... You're not going to boost any shadows. You're not going to boost any... Uh, highlights or anything like that you're not going to show more detail all it is about doing is actually just adding um, a tone and a style to your photos and as I say what I've done here is I've just made the shadow areas look a little bit cooler I've not made them darker I just made them bluer and, and I've just added a bit of warmth into the highlights that's color grading thank you